Today is my series, y'all. You can catch me the Darren from Monis. Shout out to the Monis gang. Okay, cool. So, prayer has been on my mind lately because every belief system or religion has some form of prayer. It's as if humans, no matter the race, history, and culture, generally speaking, have collectively agreed that prayer is an effective way to reach the divine or the great architect. So I thought, let me look at what science says the impacts of prayer are, right? Cool, so there's been multiple studies that have been done on the Franciscan nuns on prayer by researchers such as Roberto Macadillo, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that wrong, and his team. Studies that show that daily prayers lasting about 10 to 20 minutes a day consecutively for 8 weeks result in an increased blood flow to a part of your brain called the prefrontal cortex. Now the prefrontal cortex is important because it's generally associated with your ability to have a wider attention span, improve your mood, decrease anxiety, have self-control, planning and decision making capabilities. And these functions control your day to day life and they've been shown to be positively affected by prayer. Studies carried out by UCLA and Brita K. Hozel and the team found that people who regularly pray tend to have a larger part of their brain called the hippocampus, unlike those who do not pray. Now the left hippocampus which is affected by prayer plays a role in your mood and your memory. And a daily prayer of about 10 to 20 minutes a day consecutively for 8 weeks has been shown to increase your hippocampus density. Now mental disorders such as major depression is associated with low hippocampus density. So the simple fact that your hippocampus is increasing by prayer is such a huge benefit. This is literally crazy that your hippocampus can grow through prayer and could help in fighting mental disorders and increase brain health. I don't know or have come across an adequate theory of why this is the case, but this is what the results have shown. Maybe it's because when you pray we tap into higher positive vibrations during prayer that may promote healing, who knows. But the American Heart Association's research shows a strong correlation that people who meditate and pray daily for about 10 to 20 minutes a day have lower cardiovascular risk associated with them. Something about prayer shapes your mind and physiology to respond differently. Now, if you look at Dr. Daniel's Amen's work, who has done studies on prayer through spec studies, pretty ironic that you're studying prayer and your surname is Amen. But anyway, if you look at Dr. Amen's studies, he shows how an actual human brain is generally healthy when we're compassionate, thoughtful, loving, relaxed, and goal oriented Like our brain health depends on that. Ironically, on the Franciscan nuns participants' testimonials and their experience of prayers for eight weeks, they reported feeling just that a sense of happiness, wellness, love, cooperative attitudes. And the same prayer exercise was carried out to atheists who responded in feeling the exact same way by repeating those words. Dr. David Spiegel, who is the Associated Chair of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences and a Medical Director of the Center of Integrative Medicine at Stanford University School of Medicine, he discusses what prayer looks like on the brain. He says that prayer involves the deeper parts of your brain, such as the medial prefrontal cortex and the cingulus cortex. These parts of your brains are involved in self-reflection and self-soothing. This may explain the sense of hopefulness you, you have after you pray. And this is supported by Dr. Doretta Bruning, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that wrong, studies, who shows that prayer releases oxytocin hormones within your body. And one of the things oxytocin is associated with is social trust and attachment, giving us a sense of comfort when we pray when the world is a threat to us. See, praying is a foundation of hope. This is a useful habit to have in your life in order to remain positive. And what's crazier is there's a part of your brain named, named the parietal lobe which is responsible for, this, for the sense you have of self versus others. And when you pray, that part of the brain is less active. So when you pray, you feel the sense of connectivity. I'm starting to see why humans discovered prayer and have been passing it on from generation to generation. Funny enough, I grew up being told that if you have an addiction and you're fighting in an addiction, you should seriously consider praying about it. I never took that idea seriously. But to my surprise, evidence from the NYU Langone Health Institute in 2016 
They took alcoholics from the AA Alcoholic Anonymous program and placed them in an MRI scanner and showed them drinking related images to stimulate cravings that their brain responded to as they were addicted. But after they were instructed to pray, parts of their prefrontal cortex changed and there were drastic reductions in cravings. So the use of prayer is very effective. I personally often pray to connect to the divine because I can sometimes tap into higher energies when I pray. And I'm of the belief that we have been made to be in partnership with the great architect or the divine and we cannot be whole without that connection to source. And I ain't talking about any religion specifically as I'm not personally associated to any religion. But I am talking about your ability to be have a spiritual connection to the divine in your I am path, which can be facilitated by any religion, as those are just different points of understanding consciousness and different perspectives of looking at the divine. Nothing wrong with that, but as long as you're putting emphasis in being in touch with the divine. Prayer is one tool to do that, as at a certain level of analysis, we are literally made for that connection. There's a study by Ohio State University by Laura Wallace who conducted a study consisting of a thousand obituaries and, and she can statistically show that on average people who attend religious groupings tend to live four years longer than those who don't. Dr. Andrew Newberg in the field of neurotheology at the University of Pennsylvania who has been scanning brains close to two decades now also shows a strong co correlation between prayer and a long life. Taking prayer seriously is such a big advantage. And on the other hand, on an unrelated topic, in my personal life, I be using prayer to speak things to existence and to bring things into my experience and into my awareness. Humans historically have found prayer to be very useful in many belief systems. So it's important for us not to forget that tool moving forward within the modern world. James, my serial, you can catch me at Derek Romanis. Thank you so much for, the, for tuning in. Please subscribe, really support the channel, like so more people need this information. Get the algorithm to post videos towards them. I have a $2 link if you want to do a donation, please. I would appreciate it. If not, a like will go a long way. And if you're into NFTs, the link is in the description. I got an NFT collection too. Thank you so much. Gratitude and blessings.